Hey YouTube, hey guys, how's it going? Thomas here, back today for another episode here on our factory. Now in our last video, we finally managed to get out of our base and move up here, creating some really zigzaggedy, screwed up pattern. And we got this base up here constructed and it looks like we got a power issue. Is that because I deleted my power poles? Maybe so. Um, let's try to get that back up and running here since we did just cut the power off by accident. But I've decided to take this refinery here refinery here and we created this really goofy uh, track just to try to get up there and get started and ran through the wall there but i've decided let's try to actually upgrade that to make it just a little bit more so it is more of like an actual like legitimate design um, and not just something that we you know just kind of threw together which is really what we did but we want an actual like base here now we're starting to struggle with um, our iron production as well as several other things, which is further down in the bottom of the base. And, you know, right now I just want to get this wall here so it's actually secure because we don't have a secure wall right now. And I also need to get it so that we do have underground belts here, which I don't think this one here thing is going to actually work. So let's see if we do have a, yeah, let's go ahead and drop in a full magazine here of about 200 because that we're not going to be able to really supply it. And we'll put some underground belts across here. That way we can get our... Uh, belt line and stuff back up and running here that's we just messed up i was hoping that would actually go all the way across without no problems but all right so there you have it so now we got our basic setup right here and we have one space in between which is always good because you want to have room when you do rails to actually be able to put your rail signals on typically either side and uh, for some reason it's not saying i can actually do that right now and i don't know why but Hopefully that doesn't become a problem later on. So this here is going to be our basic rail base setup. And uh, we have this pretty much set up right where we want it here. And um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to set up, we're going to set up our first train depot here. And I'm going to show you guys more or less how are we going to go about doing that. So our signals, I should be able to put them on either side of the rail for some reason. I think these might be too close together. That's not, this is actually probably the first time I've ever had this problem. But it could also have something to do with maybe the way I've got this stuff set up. And yes, it does. I have it set up. Now I can run it either way because I had the signals on one side before. That's why I was doing that. But honestly, that don't really matter because I don't care. All right. Because this is going to be a one-way track anyway. So here's what we're doing. We're going to set this up so this is a legitimate rail depot. And what I wanted to do originally was build a big jet depot down here. But we're not going to do that. We're going to build a small depot to start with because I don't have access to this over here. And I do need a place where I can get in and out and stuff like that now our material as i said we're running out of copper ore and you're starting to see that all down in this area so we have to get the copper soon which means we're gonna have to start training it in and i want to be able to do that so i'm going to set my main belt line up right here so you can see i laid it out right here to come up here so we're going to have it run down the side here and it's going to tie in here which is kind of retarded when considering that my depot should be right here we'll have a big depot but i need to get oil in and i don't want to waste all this because we have to build blue we have to build all kinds of different stuff right in here including probably more power and everything so i don't want to waste it and i don't want to build a huge refinery which is what we need um, we're going to try to build in this compact small base so most of the time, I like to run my trains four cars long. We're not going to do that today. I do not want to run my trains four cars long. I want to, I don't want to do that for several reasons. One, if we do that, then we're going to need a big, big base. And what I'm afraid of here is because we are trying to go compact on this design, we're not going to be able to really do what we actually need to do. So this here is going to be what's called our output. Okay, this is going to be our outline here, which is where everything is going to come out. This line up here is going to be our input, which is going to be where all of our trains and everything kind of come into the depot. So we'll go ahead and start this by laying it out like so. And we're just going to run her down. And as far as we do, it determines on how far do we want to bring our train stations. I want to do my trains about two cars because we're trying to conserve space, right? So if you build long trains, you're not going to be able to conserve that space. You're going to be wasting a lot of space because you're building really long trains. And we don't want to do that. We want short trains. We want short, small, simple, compact trains, which I know is something that nobody wants to hear in Factoria. It's like, oh my God, dude, you're crazy. You need big, big, you know, train depot. Well, you know, we're trying to build small, so we're going to keep our trains short. So by doing it this way, we'll be able to put in, as you guys can see right there, we'll be able to have two train cars. So one, two, that's all we need. And I can go and we'll go ahead and we'll build right off of that concept. And then we'll just keep coming straight. So we want to get our train depot set up so we have a few trains coming in. And we, you do this by just basically going like what we're doing right here. 
and you want to have a couple um, just lines more or less just the places and we got rock and stuff in here I gotta get this stuff out so we'll go ahead and mine these out of here these are gonna be in our way but setting up train depots you know I do it all the time so hopefully we don't have no problems here but we're gonna go ahead and set it up like so and we're just gonna come over maybe a block or so it's a little bit too far we'll do it right there on the intersection yeah that intersect doing it right on the intersection that'll work perfect and we'll just come right here we want to line it up with that one there in front of us and we'll just repeat the process so we want to repeat this on each intersection that way we can get several trains and we want to probably put maybe about I would say four trains or so in here would be you know a safe bet uh, just considering you know you want to get this stuff just get it going straight you know no nothing fancy guys I know a lot of you guys are like oh dude don't do that man he's doing it wrong he's doing it wrong it's probably what some of you guys are saying but I'll tell you guys this you know the, the more you do these things the better off you you know really are um, we'll get one more right here that'll cut come short right there but that's fine so there's a basic rail depot set up here and this is more or less this is our side area because we want our place for our trains to actually come to uh, so we'll do this right so and what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and then we'll loop up so this is going to be a really small depot i'm trying to build this as small i mean honestly because i'm building this as small as i can freaking build it uh, I know a lot of people see these huge depots, and it's like, man, those are big depots. Well, big depots take big a lot of space, and then what we're doing here, uh, we don't have a room for a lot of space, guys. And you know, that's I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but that's that's the truth. So now we can put in, as you can see, we got room there actually for three cars. We could probably squeeze a fourth car in. I'm not really too concerned about that, uh, but we'll go ahead and we're going to delete this here. We don't need none of this, so we'll delete those. Okay, there we go, and we'll delete this section of rail because we don't need this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put our signals in here. And I'm not too sure if this is right. Yep, that should be good. So now our train will come in and it'll pick one of the rails that it actually needs. This signal, we don't need that. And right here on this lineup right here, we'll, we could probably actually get, honestly, get four cars in here. So one, two, three, four. And we could actually run four cars wide because this is actually a little bit bigger than what I planned it to be. But how are we taking up the whole freaking base? That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah, see, we're taking up over half of this area, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep it really small and compact. But we could probably get some of our oil refining in here. So if we can do that, that'll be, um, you know, a key savior. So we'll go ahead and right here, I want to get close as I can, and now we're just going to loop her straight back. That's all we're going to do. Now we just need to do this about three different times. So we'll just keep bringing it here. We need to do one more, and there you have it. I know a lot of guys is like, dude, don't do that stuff like that. That's not, you don't want to do it like that. Trust me, guys. You do this stuff as much as I do. Um, you know, building it the way I do the stuff. It's just it's however, you know, however you can get the stuff in here in like a legitimate fashion. Um, that's how you want to do it. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have a couple lines right here. And I'm going to, instead of offloading on both sides of the train, since this is going to be more of a tight base, we're just going to offload on one side of the train. Um, I don't actually I don't know if we can do that hang on let's before we continue here the much I don't think I can do that because you have the train stations they're gonna get in the way there see it, it requires one space I was actually that's what I was thinking I was thinking that no I can't we can't do that so we're gonna actually be not as compact as I want to be but we will be still compact as long as I put enough in there we'll just come forth one or two and then that should give us our space yeah that'll be good so there's one depot so we'll have one there for coal okay so we'll have room there for coal to get off we'll have room there for iron to get off i'll probably put take oil off right here this will be my oil depot see all these oil barrels up here i'm going to put them all right in this big area right here this will be my oil depot and i could even put a train station there if i want to so we'll have we need oil we need copper uh, we're going to need uranium as well as we get up into the nuclear world um so let's see we got oil oil copper uranium stone i'm not doing stone i just need coal copper so i need four lines mainly is what i'm after i need at least four to start and uh now since we do have our basic lines here guys i'm just going to what we're going to do is to be on the safe side is i need to make sure we get our spacing here so everything is spaced correctly if you don't space this stuff you will absolutely just completely screw yourself um so this is the basic spacing that you guys want on any type of belt line this you want three like that and the middle, um, as far as how you offload is, you know, you just put a train, a chest in the middle. So it takes it off the train, it puts it in the chest, and then it puts it 
onto the belt from the chest and then you just multiply that down through there so that's your standard offload and I can do repeat this pattern on the opposite side I'm going to repeat this pattern so it's on both sides here so this will be for this train this will be on this train here and this is how we're going to do it and then we'll skip a space so there will be our next offload so what we'll do is we'll come right here to this get it up nice and tight and then we'll just loop it back around to, or figure out how we're going to do it so we'll just loop it back we'll delete one more right now we'll loop it there we go so now she's looped okay and then that'll just come straight forward and we'll tie it in and what we have here is we'll have for up here we'll have one I could possibly t maybe convert one of these here because there's three of them already I don't really want to put my oil here um, but you know I could do that that it wouldn't really cause a major issue I don't think so that might be something I might consider doing but or I could actually take this rail up here at the top this one right here and actually turn this into a rail oil but the downside is if my train well, well, my train will stop is what will happen is it'll stop up here and then it won't come in and then it'll block all the other trains. So I don't want to do that. So no, that's absolutely like a no, no, I cannot do that. I have to put it, my oil right down here. So oil, um, we'll have copper, um, iron. Then we need our next one, which is going to be, this will probably be, so copper, iron, coal, um, now, do we have enough room there? Yes, we do. And let's just go ahead and try to get this done here. Need to get rid of some of this stuff here. There we have it. All right, so now we're going to have everything we basically need. Hmm. I could just do like I did right there earlier. You have like that. Sometimes these are just coming from the top. So there's here we have it. Just a very simple basic rail depot. We can offload. You know we offload our trains. We can get our. We got our three main things that we need. I should add one more, and I think I will add one more just you know for the hell of it. I don't think I need it, but. It's always better than, you know, it's always better to have it than not have it, you know, so there you have it. So we'll do it this way. We'll add one more section here. And that way, if I did want to, let's say, do stone or anything of that nature, I could. Um, I don't want, I don't need stone or any of that, but we are going to go ahead and we'll just put it in here. So we'll come down two. probably need to go back one. Yep. And there you have it. So we're getting our basic, we're going to go ahead and do our basic rail depot here. And uh, everything looks like it's going to come together. This is going to be a nice little station here. Uh, it took up way more space than what I thought it was going to take. Um, absolutely, you know, hate using this much space. I, I really do hate using this much space. But uh, I don't need this, but I'm going to put this one in as well. And then we'll have all of our main lines. There, there you have it. So, guys, so anybody who wanted to know how to build a rail station, this is probably the best... Um, one of the better examples on how to do one. Um, I mean, there's tons of ways you guys can do it. We're, this is going to be set up for small. This is more of a small scale rail station here. But, um, you know, crafting these things by hand, I mean, they're just, they're so time consuming. But, you know, once you get one built, it's, it's completely worth the time and the investment and all that good stuff. So now we'll just drop our signals on the lines here. That way none of our trains collide. Everything works proper. We'll just do that. See what else do we need? Boom, boom. There we go. So all of our trains should come in. They should park up here. Stop. Wait. I'm thinking. Actually, no. I'm thinking we're doing it wrong. I think these are not. That's not supposed to be right. We need to use chain rail signals here. I do believe. Oh, that was bad. I did not mean to delete that. All right, the chain rail signals, I do think they're going to let the train know what's in front up here. So because what will happen is if the train wants to come in here, it'll actually pull up and it'll stop on this line and block all the other trains. You don't want that. You want this signal here to reach up ahead 
to know whether there's a train in the way or not. So if I took, um, we got, I got a locomotive here. I could take a locomotive, and if I drop that right here, that's going to turn all these red, which is correct. But let's say if we drop the locomotive in one of these inbound routes, but the train, if the train was trying to come here, it really requires two locomotives to do this. I only have one on me. But if the train's sitting in the depot here, it's going to block it. That's more or less the, the logic behind this. So let's go ahead and drop these signals here. That should work. And we'll get those all dropped in there. So now we got our depots. So everything is basically more or less fully set up now. So we have a basic train depot there. So yeah, we need to use, I do think, the chain rail signals back here. All right, that way, what will happen is, if the all right, so understand the logic behind this, guys, is when the train comes in, the train will come in here and it will stop here. And it will not, you know, if, there is a tr if there's a train in this area, if there's a train here, the train will stop here because this train knows there's a train here because it's using a chain rail signal because this will be red, so therefore it'll send the signal here to stop it if it's in this bay. Um, that way the trains don't stop on this rail. Now that's the logic behind this, but until we actually test it to make sure that that is correct, then yeah, um, I don't know if it's 100% <laughs> if that's accurate or not. So now that we are did just get up with finish up with this train bay here, um, the next logical thing is just to make sure that everything does flow correctly. Sometimes trains will uh, need to circle back around. It's it, it it is rare that that does happen, but we do want to put a loop in the system somewhere, and we'll just add that loop right there just just to be on the safe side. And then I'll add another train thing right there like that, and that way the train can come in here and it can actually make a full loop right there in the middle if it needs to. But there's absolutely no reason the train should come in here and actually try to make a loop. Um, unless it tries to loop in, loop back around one of these or something like that, or if it comes in and it's blocked or something. But I don't really understand why I would want to loop like that. But anyways, guys, here's your basic train depot. I can delete all these old rails here, delete this here. This is set up for two-way trains. Um, and this will be perfect as we expand. Right now we have only one line, so we'll just run one train, but we are going to have to start expanding soon. So when we do get into that expansion area, um, you know, what we'll do is this train depot will come in, you know, really good handy and stuff right here. And as you guys can see, we have this nice big setup right here. So I don't like doing this because this takes up so much space. Look how much space that took up. It took up like the whole one corner of our base. It's like, oh my God, really? I'm, 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 I'm dreading this guy though, really, yeah, because I know how much these take up and we need that space because I know by the time, if you look over here, just our research, see how much research we got, we're going to have this much research, if not more, in this space right here because we're getting ready to go into blue research and I'm going to need all of this space right in here, probably over half, probably as much as this rail depot right here in the middle for our refinery to get our plastic and all that and we're going to get into that in our next video, but I'm going to go ahead and try to finish setting this thing up right here. Uh, we got to go. The last thing we're going to do here, as far as setting this up goes, is we just got to drop in our train stations. So uh, I can do that right now. Show you guys how this will work. But um, as far as train stations goes, um, why is it doing it that way? Okay, so it's on the bottom. Yeah. So as far as train station goes, how many are we going to get? We're going to have one engine. One, two, three, four. Actually, I can get four cars in here. So I made this thing way oversized. I could downsize it if I need more space. But uh, other than that. You know, we have a full-sized, you know, fully functionable train depot, and that's that's great. And, um, you know, the way these train depots will work, just so for those of you guys and stuff like that who are not familiar with the uh, actual train depots and all that good stuff on, like, well, how does the train depots work? Well, if you take the train depots and if you name this one, let's say, uh, you know, oil, Main Oil 1, this here is named Main Oil 1, right? And this train station right here, this one here is also main, named Main Oil 1. So the train will actually come in and go to this station or it'll go to this station because it has the same name. That's how these trains and stuff actually work. That's how they function. So, you know, the reality of the matter is, um, you know, if you put them at different names, they'll go to whatever stop. But, for example, I could do, let's say, Main Oil 1 right here. 
and then I could do like main oil one right here and what will happen is that train will go to either one of these stops because the train thinks this is the same stop this one's the same stop as this one if these are both named the same and you know it's it, setting up trains guys it's really simple I know some people struggle with it it's just all it really comes down to like what I did right here and that's your spacing just trying to get stuff spaced out and all that good stuff laying it out getting your train so they all float uh, that's your biggest part and I mean really you know if you don't if you're trying to save space just offload one side of the train don't offload both sides lay your deep train stations out just like I did here we got plenty of room here so I can run all this stuff here uh, we can run it down and run all this stuff here offload run it down um, so we'll have room here for you know we'll have oil we'll have uranium we'll have copper coal iron and then we have an extra one if we want to do stone or something else or something or maybe we'll have a second oil line who knows or extra copper line you know, sometimes I'm, I'll probably end up set. What I'll probably do is I'll take two of these and set them up so there's two of them here. Probably two that's actually in the middle, like one here and one here. And what I'll do is I'll probably put these two, both of these, since they're side by side, is um, either iron ore or I'll do these two here as iron ore. And then the belts, like where they're both offloading into the same beltway here, uh, the simple thing for me to do would be just to take a splitter and do like that, and then I can just split them all together. So that would be the way to do that. And, um, you know, that's a simple setup right there. And, you know, the fact is some people might say, oh, you need four belts, you need more belts, you need more to get the stuff off. Well, you know, you know, when you're doing trying to do compact and build a small rail depot, um, it is. But the fact is a rail depot is a rail depot. They take up a lot of space. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how hard you try. It is going to take up a lot of space. But anyways, guys, so... We're going to go ahead and wrap this up, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully, I taught you something. Hopefully, I showed you guys how to set up a rail depot. Um, I really wish we could get a train down here. Um, actually, let's go ahead, and I want to put a train down here. That's what I want to do. Um, this is main oil one. This is main oil one. Let's put a train here. So, And I'm going to take this train here, and we're going to put this train right here. Um, and what it'll do is that'll make this red and that red and we're gonna go ahead and take we do have another train up here So I don't want to end this just yet. Let's go ahead and call our other train. I turned this train off up here That's actually at our oil um, You know off just due to the fact that I did not want to get run over by the train by accident So, you know, it's you know, it's a good idea when you're working on your rail lines always turn off your locomotives Because it's a good way to actually get hit by a train if you do not turn them off. So um, our train that's actually up here is going to be coming in really fast here. So let's see, where is it? There she is. So it's going to come right in on this line. And as you can see, this train here knows that this line is red. So if I would go to this train here and say, okay, I want to send you to, where can we put you, right? So how do I demonstrate this? Uh, well, I'll start with, I need some fuel that might be, you know, a little helpful, you know? So how do I get this? Well, let's just rob this train a little bit. <laughs> So what we'll do is we'll put fuel in this train and um, let's add that coal that we just stole and then we'll set the schedule so it will go to add station. We'll set this to main oil one. Um, I guess it don't really matter and then we'll just set it to automatic. Now that should not go there. Ooh, that did not work. What did we do wrong? See that shouldn't have did that because of that train signal was in fact here. So something is not right about how this depot is actually set up. So I might have to actually, I'm gonna, we're going to have to reconfig this here. So something's wrong. I'm thinking we might need train signals here. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll back this train up here just to see. Um, we're going to have to go into settings. We'll have to go manual and then we will back it up. The rate I'm going is probably be easier to just actually just go straight. Okay, there we go. We'll go back. Whoops. Yeah, we're just going to let me get out of here. I can actually honestly set this thing up faster just doing it this way. So apparently we might need to actually use the other signals. So this, these chain signals here. So I might have told you guys wrong in that earlier section there. So let's double check here and we'll go ahead and we'll do main oil one time passed. Set it to automatic. And there you have it. OK, it stopped. So. It is the blue signals, it's these. That's what we want. We want chained rail signal. So anybody who thinks using these here, this is a bad idea, you don't do that. So I'm, I told you guys wrong, sorry about that. But you wanna use those signals there and then the smart signals up here as well. So now what'll happen is when I take this train forward, watch what happens. 
So we'll click on here, we will turn it manual, and then we'll run our forward and watch when it gets out of the zone. See how that worked? That old train will come to the next stop. And there you have it. That's just how it works. And where did our other train actually go to? Is it, did it go all the way to the depot? Or is it coming back? Oh, it's going to loop all the way up and come back. Let's make sure we're out of the way here. And that train, when it comes back, it should stop at one of these depots. So it'll stop there. Yep, so it'll stop there. That way it's not blocking other trains. So if another train's trying to get down to here to one of these lines, what will happen is it'll come through up here. So if I delete this train right now, that train will automatically come here because there's nothing at main oil one. And if I would put, let's say, a train, um, that train back over here, and let's say, like when I was telling you guys a second ago, um, let's go ahead and re-add this again. One second, I just want to finish this demonstration here so you guys get a better understanding of what I'm talking about here. So we'll re-add this as main oil one time passed, right? So there's main oil one and we'll set it to automatic. So now it's going to stop there because there's something in main oil one. But if you have two train stations, see how this is main, main oil one. If you have two train stations that are named the same thing, so we'll rename this to main oil one, right? You, you apply that. What will happen is you'll have two train stations that are the same thing. Actually, that's not right. Hang on, crap. I must I misspelled that. I said main mail <laughs> oil main oil. So yeah, and there you have it. That so should be right. M A I N oil. Yep. Yeah, okay, there it was. There was a slight delay, but the train automatically comes over to this station now. So these two stations are identical. The trains will think on the same, and that way you can get it set up. Now you guys can take this system. You can make it as big as you want, but this is your your really your basic system. And if this train needs to get like back around or make a loop or something to go to a different line, sometimes you'll have it set up. So um, some people will set up like a dedicated fuel one here. So one station will be what's called fuel. And that station, like on every train, you'll put a route on it called fuel. So when they do come back through here, what they'll do is they'll make a circle back around and then they'll go to their fuel and then leave. So there's a few different ways you guys can set up your train stations. Um, this here is probably the most standard. Uh, I actually made this way too big. I was meaning to shoot this a lot smaller. I guess it's just where I'm so used to it. But these loops here, um, I was wanting to have this section about right here. And that way these are almost like circles. So um, I made them a little too far apart, but it's all good. Um, we'll just have to gain some more control in our base. I guess we'll just expand out this side of our base at a later date, and we'll just try to push this out further and get control of this over here. It looks like we got some good coal down here at the bottom. Um, so I'm not sure how that's going to work. It looks like we're going to have to run. Our, if we're going to get coal from here, we're going to have to come all the way up and then loop around and then back in. Just because how our base is set up, that's why I was saying I was wanting to set up over here versus here because I didn't really plan on. But I do have coal right here. I do have iron right here. So I'm probably going to go for this coal, this iron, because there's also uh, copper right there as well. So that will be a good area to go to. Not to mention this is up next to my big giant oil deposit. So trying to just dominate and control this area right in here will probably be my, our next major expansion. But anyways, guys, and I'm going to go ahead and try to finish building this here. I'm going to get all these belts and stuff, I guess, tied together, get all this connected. And um, in addition to that, we're going to get this oil refining set up here because we do have all this oil refining and everything right here, as you guys can see. Uh, we've got this extra track and some stuff here. We need to clean that up. But with all that being said, I'm going to name all these stations, get these lines all tied together, and that way when we do get our rails going, all the trains will bring in the ores, they'll drop them off where they're supposed to be, and everything will start coming along nicely. And um, here in the next video, just like I said, I think we're going to go ahead and get started on oil refining. So I'm going to show you guys how to set up an oil refinery, and I'm going to try to do it compact, and I'm going to have to delete this top rail up here because we don't need that. But we'll get an oil refinery going up. We'll get oil storage, and I'm not sure where I'm going to put my oil storage. I think right in the center here loop, this would be perfect for oil storage just because there's nothing here. So this is going to work beautifully. This will be like an excellent spot to have our oil storage and everything of that nature. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and peace out, YouTube.